Frank. 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 Come on, man. Can I Be Frank is all about capturing real, authentic, unedited conversation. So, these are 80 quid, only. And then you've oh got the word. app, so you can just upload it directly onto the computer afterwards. No way. Yeah. Oh my gosh. That's great. It like is great. 80 each. No. What? Well, it's it's no more than 100 anyway. You oh get them gosh. in the guitar shop in town. I can't think of, um, is it Walton? Is oh it yeah. yeah. Yeah, you get them in there. Wow. Yeah. <coughs> I do this thing of um, just starting it. I yeah. think I think it's a great way to do it. Isn't it? <laughs> yeah, just like now, like. Oh, well, it started. It started a few minutes, a few <laughs> seconds ago. <laughs> oh. Okay. Yeah. Do you think I was thinking about this? Do you think this should be? I don't like format. The idea of format or a kind of a a structure. Or, you know, with these things. Can you have a podcast about a podcast? You can, I think, can't you? <laughs> yeah. Do you very, think this should be structured? Meta, very meta. Of you. What's meta? Like, you know, just uh, like, you know, kind of uh, looking at the, talking about the, talking about talking about things. Yeah, talking you know, about talking about things. Talking about talking about things. Yeah, talking about talking about things. Yeah. Um. Yeah, you have one, don't you? I, uh, I do, yeah. I'm actually, I'm revamping it again. Okay, because um, it wasn't there when you searched for it. Yeah, because um, I was doing it with a friend of mine and okay. um, he went on to become a therapist, so he didn't really want to have that kind of online presence or whatever, you know, which is fair Yeah, I, I had a look at you. Are you going to be a therapist? Are you studying to be a therapist? I that was a, a studying it. Joke? Okay. Oh, no, I was studying it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I was warned about this thing called love transference. Have you ever heard what this is? So this is where, like, you fall in love with your therapist. Right? Now, it didn't happen to me, but I researched it. It's very, very common. It happens all the time. So now, I'm studying to become a therapist. <laughs> yeah. Gonna get myself a boyfriend. <laughs> um, but I stopped because I honestly can't be bothered. <laughs> with <laughs> people. <laughs> with people, and they're shit like yeah. <laughs> Really? Yeah, genuinely, yeah, yeah. And like, so and how long did you do coming, it for, like? That's just coming from me going through my own stuff and it yeah. taking so long and me really wanting to change and wanting to realize things and, and learn and grow and just it's still being the most arduous slow process yeah um so then i was like i can't be doing this now all my life I, I think i will eventually do it when i'm older but is that a thing that you might think that oh well i need to be just completely a thousand percent happy and then I can be a therapist because really I'm just being a fake if I go in. Yeah, is it that? I have to have my shit together. I have to be totally <laughs> on the notch, you know, 100% all the time. Like, yeah. Is, is that, that wasn't part of it, was it? No, that wasn't part of it. Okay. It just didn't feel like it was my time to do it. Like, I really just want to do comedy. Like, that's all yeah. I want okay. to do. So it's just really about that. I did it, to be honest, for personal development reasons. Yeah. Yeah, I did it for that. And so it you, was did it, like, you, you did it for a year? I did it for two years, okay, part-time, well. yeah. And... Honestly, it was the best thing I've ever done. It was fantastic. Yeah. You learn a lot about yourself. Like you mm. do, particularly in, there's these um, group process things that you do. So that's just 12 people sitting in a room for an hour and a half, once a Saying week. Saying how you feel? Ex that's exact, that's the only point, is just what's going on for you in this moment right now. That's all you have to focus on. And it's the hardest thing to do. <laughs> yeah, because I mean, the inclination is surely that you go in w into this and you're going, um, well, I'm going to say this when it's my turn. No? Yeah, like, yeah, exactly. I've got, at least I've got this set up now. I'd, yeah, I'd be okay for the first round. <laughs> if I come back around again, hopefully I think it's something You go with your material and your set list. <laughs> well, yeah. at least there a bit you of that. You start performing. Yeah. <laughs> no, there isn't, because it's just about how you're feeling in the moment. And, yeah. and it's amazing what happens, because in a group thing like that, you start projecting onto other people like you know from previous people that you've encountered in your life that you may still have unresolved issues with you start projecting that onto people in the room yeah and so it's just that's what we do though all the time exactly we do yeah. it all the time but we're not aware of it you know yeah somebody that looks like somebody 
then they're definitely like that fucker that I met from a couple of years yeah, ago and, and you don't even give them a chance. Exactly, yeah, yeah, yeah. You could be just unreasonably cross with them. For oh, no he's reason. wearing a suit. He must be a fucker because I met somebody once in yes. a suit. It's not as bad as that, but it's... Well, it's on similar level, yeah, yeah. absolutely. Okay, so you, uh, that, is it supposed to be cathartic kind of thing as well? Like yeah, the, the, the room in the 12. Yeah, yeah, that's the whole point of it. Like, it's, it's not supposed to be easy now or anything, you know. Um, yeah. But it is, you, you know... And obviously, with anything, the more you give into it and the more you put into it, the more you sort of get out. So, um, yeah, I learned a lot about myself. It was kind of an embarrassing way to learn things because you're you just feel very exposed and you're like, oh, God. But obviously, um, I mean, you weren't the only ones. So it was a safe enough place. Oh, it was. Oh, super yeah. safe. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. And everyone's um, everyone's very supportive and they're very nice and. You know, like, so you do feel safe, definitely. Mm. Yeah, absolutely. So it's really good. Well, you got up on stage now. I had a look at head stuff or something. The oh, yeah, lecture. that yeah. was a while ago, yeah. Uh, but you obviously get up on stage. So the mind doing it in a small room and you're telling people <laughs> how you're feeling. I suppose in a way... That's harder just, to do the, the therapy type. Well, it's more real, is it? Yeah, then? of course. Yeah, yeah. yeah, it is. Yeah, okay. Yeah, it's raw. Um, and so, like, uh, yeah, okay. Is it always on that now? I'm curious about it. Um, <laughs> Uh, but in the end, you didn't want to be a therapist. You didn't want to sit in a room and have to listen to other people's shit. No, no, I really didn't. No, yeah. um, not right now. I think I think I will go back to it in time, you know, in my life. But mm. no, just right now, it's. Um, I think it would really frustrate me. Yeah, why? I, I'm just... Uh, I think maybe I... Perhaps I'm like somewhat... Over, I'm easily overstimulated or something so sometimes as well I think I sort of I can really feel like other people's energies you know and kind of how things are with them and I can pick up on how people are yeah and oftentimes then it's kind of hard for me to like detach from that or whatever you know and because you kind yeah. of want to help you're like just do this thing you know or I know that this is going on for you but the whole thing with therapy is that you know everyone else might know what your issue is you might be the last person to yeah. realize it but it's still it wouldn't be your process if someone just told you you know like if i went to a therapist and they were like you have intimacy issues you need to sort that out yeah and you know i have to realize that myself and i have to take time it yeah. takes time it has to click yeah because if someone just said that to me i get super defensive and i'd be like no what are you talking about and i probably just switch therapists yeah, well, you see, to me, I think this idea of trying to fix somebody is, yeah, I think what you're well, saying you is really, that. That it's, it's really what therapy is, in my mind, is that it, it's a, a space for which somebody can be heard. Yeah. And in that, they might hear themselves. Exactly. That's pretty good, actually. That, that is yeah. excellent. <laughs> <laughs> um, that is excellent. Have you ever done therapy? I have, yeah. 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 Very good. And how'd you find it? Um, just a bit. Yeah, I'm going. Uh, and my dad died, and I was kind of working fifteen-hour days, so I kind of just uh, had to chat yeah. to somebody. Was it helpful? I did a year of it, and I thought, "Fucking hell!" I could be talking about myself forever. I genuinely thought, you know, because I genuinely thought at one point as well, uh, where do we go next? You know, do, will we go? Let's go back to this place here and see can we delve in here. And in the end, I kind of thought, right, well, a year is loads to just fucking offload. And um, so I definitely did find it amazing. Sorry, I'm holding back there. But I did find it amazing. Okay. I found it. Um, um, I think the being heard thing is amazing in a non-judgmental space for anybody on the fucking planet. I th now I'm saying anybody on the planet so I don't have to fucking talk about myself. But I think, <laughs> I do think there's, for me, there was something amazing in the idea of offloading and being heard and without somebody going, well, that's bullshit. Because I'd be at that myself where somebody's just going, okay. And then maybe there might be a conversation out of it. Like he used to have techniques about, you know, when it was time to wrap up. Did you, did you you've done it so you know <laughs> by an hour it's not like you go on for an hour and a half it's no. kind of like you know at the hour mark it'd be um <laughs> <laughs> yeah it'd be so i think what we've covered today is this <laughs> this and this and you know you kind of nearly bring you out of yourself and 
ask yes. how, how are the kids or something to get you back in good form. Yes. And um, yeah, so I did a year of that now. How long did you do it for? Um, I did it for, uh, gosh, like three or four years, I think. Three or four years. Yeah. Wow, okay. Yeah. Um. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're really fucked up. <laughs> I knew that was what you were yeah. thinking. <laughs> no, I actually, do, I do go through this. Um, in the spirit of this is, yeah, I do go to this um, woman in Bray from time to time. Sounds. <laughs> anyway, yeah, for these kind of um, energy thingies. Oh, cool. Yeah, oh, oh, I'm thanks. big into all this. I know. Shit, I love you know. this shit. I love it. But where do you stop, like, I mean, really, truly, when <laughs> yeah. do you actually stop going, do you know what, today you're grand, like, you know, you don't need to go and do the, te- like, this morning, right, I was texting Dylan, and Dylan was saying, oh, I'm doing a bit of yoga, a bit of meditation, and I'm going to do the cold shower, just to get the day started, <laughs> and I was texting him back, well, I'm doing the deep breathing, the meditation, <laughs> the cold shower, and yoga, and may- the day would probably be over by the time yeah. I'm finished, and then I'm ready for the day. You know, this Wrecks is fucking them. bullshit. Like, yeah, so. yeah. But I still, I like those sort of things. Maybe. I love all that stuff. Do you? I love it. Yeah. Yeah. I love it. What was the therapy you did in Bray? What was that? Um, yeah, it's a kind of an interesting. <laughs> Let's make this more about you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, after this. No, then. I'm joking. <laughs> no, it's great. It's about me. I mean, lovely. Fuck's sake. Um, it's kind of like. So she talks to you. Sometimes you might go out and you just have a conversation and there's no kind of at the thing of it, at the end of it, it isn't like, you know, signing you up for 12 months yeah. or 24 months. Or here's or, a know, potion. That's y- yeah, there's, there's none euro. of that. No, it's a, it could be a lot of chatting and then other times she, you might just lie down in the bed. <laughs> Sorry. So basic. But uh, And then she'll do actual, she'd stand over you. But there was uh, something about it, Mary. Uh, that's what I would always say. There was something yeah. about it. Like, she'd put, she'd go, Oh, you injured yourself uh, recently. And, you know, uh, I mean, that, that sounds vague, but it was, she'd always say something really specific. And she was obviously extremely sensitive. So you talked about that sensitivity to other people's mm. energy. She she is really sensitive to all that sort so of stuff. So was it like Reiki? That kind of stuff. Yeah, maybe it was Reiki. Yeah. Something like that. Like, But she'd talk you through exactly what she was doing and then she'd tell you to put your attention say you're fucking oh feeling some sort of anxiety some sort of whatever the fuck she and you're saying right it's in my chest or it's in my throat so she'll do all this shit and you do feel all this shit like yeah stuff but she would do all this and you would feel you'd feel different afterwards yeah yeah. like and that for me i'm very kind of analytical you know to know whether well is this actually is this just bullshit where's the science yeah, yeah, well, yeah. I, I do think there should be proof. Like, I, mean, I do. Otherwise... I agree. I agree. I think perhaps in time there maybe will be and stuff. You know, there'll be more of this um, coming out and yeah, sign. Well, maybe. Yeah, I guess maybe scientifically proven. Yeah, I suppose that the proof is in how you're feeling, isn't it? Like, I think for now that's you know what you have to go on, and I, that's mm. something that I um, totally disregarded for so long, like most mm. of my life. I would never really trust that feeling and how I felt and. Oh, if this feels good, then it's fine to do. Yeah. Like, I, w- I just didn't trust that at all. And now it's like, that's the only thing I go up by. Yeah, well, that's following your gut and go in the fucking flow. You, you some, we somehow lose that, though. Yeah, don't we? yeah. And oh. we start doing things that are, um, that you're uncomfortable with and you've been uncomfortable. And you, it's like, you know, I used to work in a fucking big corporation. And you're yeah. just going in every day a certain... Yeah. This is the way I am. I have to go in and get this fucking done, and I have yeah. to be brilliant at it, and I have to. Rah, 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 rah. And you're doing things for other people. Yeah, you are. Yeah. Yeah. So it's this like your locus of evaluation is like it's external all the time, as opposed to just it being internal. It's like, what do I want to do? But certainly, I find like sometimes when you're in certain jobs, that's not really like the worst question to ask yourself because, yeah. you know, then you're just very aware of this is really not what I want to do at all, and it's killing my soul. Yeah. You know, and then. But everybody else is doing it, so it's okay. Almost. Is it okay though? I mean, everyone's pilled up and drinking, and you know. Yeah. I don't think I don't think it's okay. No, I, I mean, I, I absolutely categorically and a thousand percent don't think it's okay. <laughs> it absolutely killed me working in a corporation. Yeah. And so much so that I, you know, I had to do my own thing and set up my own thing. But still, that was still the same. I think the habit of, um, yeah, of doing something that you don't like 
for so long becomes the way. Yeah. Yeah, it's fucking scary. And then you do other things, most likely maladaptive things, to help you cope and get yeah. through the day. To numb the fucking pain. To numb the pain, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, drink loads. Oh, God. yeah. I did that. I yeah. drank loads for ages. You were a teacher. Place. Yeah. That seems in principle a nice job. Is that is that? Have you given it up totally? No, I work part time. Yeah. Given what up for totally Te- teaching. <laughs> I drink part time. <laughs> <laughs> um, I no, I work part time now. Yeah. yeah, and I work in sl- a slightly different role. I don't work as a class teacher. I work as sort of. Um, I work with the children with emotional disturbances. You know. Okay, was that uh, that's not S and A style stuff? No, no, no. it's. Um, no, it's just with the other training that I've acquired. Okay, like I've you done probably psychology. don't want to talk about that too much because I mean, I'm all, not going to talk. All about the it. kids will be watching this now. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> they're at school. Yeah. Um, no, but uh, and I like I teach mindfulness and stuff like that. You do know? you really? Yeah, yeah. So okay. I do that kind of. I'm do like the hippie teacher who's had a breakdown, you know, and <laughs> it's come back and she's <laughs> off. What when you say changed. breakdown now? Like because you said that on the stage. Oh, I just had a breakdown. So how, how are you today? You know, <laughs> what do you mean by that? What does breakdown mean? Breakdown means I was really, really depressed and yeah. uh, couldn't, just couldn't do it. I just couldn't go on anymore. I think I had for so long and done that, like other ways to cope, like drinking, whatever. Mm. Um, and just eventually it was like, oh, this is just too much. Like, I just I can't mm. fucking keep doing this. This is, I hate this. I remember being like, it was around Christmas time. I could totally relate to that, by the way. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. I was around Christmas time. Like it was a good few years ago now. It's maybe like five or six years ago. And um, I just remember everything being so difficult. Mm-hmm. Like so, and I know Christmas time is like, you know, not the best time for, you know, your mental health yeah. <laughs> generally. But um, it was actually fine. Like that, that Christmas was very nice. Nothing was you know in reality in like objective reality of, of the situation everything was lovely mm. but just anything i couldn't do anything like just even like trying to meet friends i just couldn't do that a conversation was just too much like i just was really really sad and like i just couldn't face going back to work and all the kind of stuff so i was off for a few months and why um why do you think that you know that a feeling of i don't want to meet anybody mm. Uh, you, yeah. can, you can go stop. <laughs> uh, you can just flip, a, you can flip it black round on me, do right? Do we have a safe word? <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, fucking hell, right? Um, <laughs> we'll reverse it out the driveway in a little bit, will we? <laughs> um, yeah, maybe. Well, I, I suppose I was going, why do you think you know that feeling of you don't want to go and meet people? Mm. Any idea? Can you remember that feeling of... You know, I suppose being able to go to your friends, especially girls, are much better at. It's, it's, but that was the that was the problem, right? Because you're told that oh, women are better at this. Yeah. Women are better with their emotions. Women are able to talk. That was actually that compounded things for me, if anything. Yeah. Because I was like, what does that mean? Am I not even a woman now? And then you're like, oh, what's what's going on there? You know, like I just felt I was failing at everything. You know. Oh, but and that also, you couldn't do it. Is this I couldn't do it. Yeah. I was so emotionally dead inside mm. i was so emotionally dead inside i couldn't access my emotions i didn't know the words like i yeah. genuinely didn't know the words yeah. for emotions like which sounds mental but well it doesn't it actually doesn't sound mental if you're just overwhelmed like and yes, if you're kind of true. energetically fucking totally at odds with everything that's going on and it's like you say you're like a computer system with all the wires are just not working so there's just no way to be able to say well this is how i'm feeling because one sentence isn't enough and when do i stop talking if yeah. i really really oh. if it really comes out what's, yeah. what's wrong yeah i remember actually when i was um it's probably about nine years ago i went to the philippines to do some like voluntary work with um street children okay and i was there for whatever a couple nearly a couple of months and like oh it was like awful you know like just what just the, it's amazing to me how people on this planet can have such different experiences of life mm. really like you know and then obviously like how fortunate we you know mo- a lot of people are thankfully which is just everyone should be i feel but anyway they were like the stuff that these kids had gone through was just despicable like it shouldn't it's apparent but um i do remember they had this thing this type of therapy called primal scream therapy okay for uh the it was kind of like the teenagers you know and so they go into a room a padded Mm. room and there was like really loud classical music turned up to like the highest and they would just scream 
and cry and kick the walls and hit the walls and I was just I remember just being in there and I was like crunched down on the ground and I was like oh my god I was terrified but I was terrified first of all but then I was completely in awe of them mm. I was like oh my god they're so free that must be amazing for them to be able to do that to let that out yeah. and then I had this huge terror and fear that what would happen if I did that and I could yeah. never do that because I'd never stop screaming you know I was like I knew so I knew that there was an awful lot and did you going on no I didn't I wasn't able I was so you wouldn't wanted to go no can I just have the room to myself for a few minutes <laughs> I'm just gonna let fucking rip, like. <laughs> I should have. Oh! Like, that's totally what I should have done. You totally should have. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Would have saved me five years of therapy. Of talking. <laughs> um, yeah. yeah, maybe that is what we need to do. We just need just to go outside and scream. scream. Yeah, probably. I do. You know what I, I do? I don't think we need to scream in front of other people, though. Do well, we? Maybe. I mean, I'm not sure. I mean, because when the kids, like, for example, when the kids go out to yard at break time, they just go out screaming as if not only the building but they are on fire like yeah. you know, it's like they're just quite screaming and it's amazing but they're obviously just so bored as well from like oh, and they're so frustrated it's absolutely horrendous to keep a child i sat agree in the seat. and that's yeah, to be sat, honest sat in the seat, sit, sat in the seat, yeah and know. that's i've that's one of the difficult that's one of the many difficulties i have with the school system and working as a teacher and in a school um that really just it's it just kind of killing me you know mm. i just think it's just dreadful like they shouldn't be well, my 10 year old goes to school so we had to start this thing from my, my 10 year old uh on you know so after the summer holidays last year i i brought, had to walk i walked him to school because he was so low now you're talking fucking say you're 28 you've had an amazing christmas and you're it's the sunday before staring back into another year mm. at work and you're just going to yourself is this fucking it is this my life so i look at my 10 year old going uh he is he, well i'm projecting on him but we're walking to school together and energy is just so low and he is just devastated and you kind of part of me is going i mean this is this is as good as the it best gets now this is the best bit of the trip and um <laughs> but so anyway this year you see i can't we he's very like likes rules and um so he we've said that you that's that's not a, you can't be like that anymore there's an <laughs> if you're if you're i know this is probably terrible but <laughs> if you're really positive about school you hop out of bed um in the morning times and you're, we're hearing good things about you in school on friday you get um two euros right okay yeah now the mood has transformed over Nice. Now, obviously, that wouldn't work for adults. <laughs> You'd be really positive, and I'm going to give you fucking another twenty quid. But you never know. This could be a new therapy. Yeah, it pay. <laughs> You're not allowed to be happy, unhappy anymore. But if if you stay happy and really positive, I'm going to give you more I'll money. I'll give you five euro discount. Yeah, <laughs> you're me. going to get a bonus. <laughs> fucking hell. But um, so either he's kind of just going up to me, hi dad, and everything's great, and then he's going into his room on his own. But he, oh, no, he's not. He's definitely I his hope mood not. has. Well, I mean, I'd know that, but his his yeah. mood has definitely lifted, because I think part of it was us almost not ena enabling is definitely the wrong word, but if you're just going, oh, I hear you, buddy, and I mean, if you start saying to him, oh, this is it, like you know, <laughs> you're going to have to, be, it's going to be like this nothing. forever and ever, then you're going to have to get a job and sit in front of a desk for the rest of your life, and the idea of being free yeah. and wild is just gone forever, like oh, yeah, know. yeah. <laughs> 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 oh fucking hell I know yeah, let's blow yeah. your brains out stuff anyway I know it is isn't it a little yeah. bit um, no, but so that's okay. why I think it's really important like you've given up that when you're doing that job way less and you're trying to do something you really like yeah. to do or you're doing something that you really like doing and yes. I think that's the fucking if there there isn't a key to life but a big fucking thing is trying to do something that you love doing yes you know, they talk about finding your passion and I must have read every fucking book under the sun about that. But yeah, sorry, do you know what I mean? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. What's your do you do you have one passion or do oh, you jump? Fuck off. Oh sorry. <laughs> <laughs> uh oh, should, that's the type of thing, because I've read all these books, so oh, find your passion, you know. Um I really like chatting. 
Maybe that's is your that, passion. Is that, is that, is that's okay. Is that? Yeah, but also your passion could be just reading these books about finding your passion. Yeah, Again, but that's all about getting about to the, I'm looking for the cha-ching moment there. You know, <laughs> I'm still lo- looking at the book and I'm going, well, what, you know, what is your passion? I don't, uh, I don't know. That, yeah. That stuff. I like doing this. Yeah. Now, I, but that's, yeah. I think that's just, the, that goes back to just how does it feel when you're doing it? Yeah. And, you know, because, I mean, if I thought logically about comedy, it's a dreadful idea. Yeah, dreadful. it's insane. It's a yeah. dreadful, and it's a dreadful life choice. Well, where like, does that come out of? I I don't really know. I think um, I I just I think my friends and um, my boyfriend at the time we just used to go into the international to comedy shows yeah. quite regularly, but it was just at that time it was just like I didn't even know what comedy was really. Yeah. And also I think it was just like oh just go here because we can drink here and mm. there's something on and we don't have to talk to one another you know that kind of way, um, but. And then I just kept going and kept going and I was, I ended up just not drinking then when I would attend comedy shows because okay. I wanted my mind to be alert. Yeah. And genuinely, I know this sounds terrible, but I genuinely think comedy was really the very first thing that sort of made, just made me be awake. My, it just woke my brain up, yeah. maybe start thinking, you know, and that's after going through primary school, school secondary school, college. I love that though. Go on, yeah. And you know, being nothing, having been lit up, yeah, before. I mean, with English and Leaving Cert a bit, you know, like with poetry and literature and stuff like that, I was definitely into that. Mm. Um, and with philosophy in college, I was definitely into that, but there wasn't that much of it. Um, but then comedy was like, wow, this is amazing. But like, it's is. I suppose they need to know the timings. But um, at one point, obviously, you were in your bedroom feeling fucking like not great let's just say yeah let's, yeah let's I think, do, but i think that go. was most of the time like i think you know looking back i think i was super anxious as a child and then that Actually, goes on just flip this. Oh. <laughs> Brain, everything lovely there you go also i feel i should explain like from the top why i'm standing like this um it's because i heard recently that eight out of ten men prefer a woman with a thigh gap so Sorry, you're saying, um, yeah, I was saying, um, yeah, I just think that was like, I was super anxious as a child and I think that just goes on and on and certainly very anxious as a teenager and a lot of difficulties there. Um, and then it just goes on and you eventually... You get you're like, anxious as an adult, which is not which, really fair. You're supposed to be grown up and have yeah, no anxiety. I know, yeah. yeah. And then that develops, when you haven't treated that, I think, when you're a child and a teenager, mm. that just be, then becomes depression when you're an adult. So I think that's just what happened to me, you know? I mean, you have to deal with it at some point. Mm. And I knew that too. I knew, like, I knew doing that psychotherapy course. I was like, this is going to do it now. But then when did the comedy uh, come in, in doing this? Was this, the comedy course was before? Yeah, I started doing comedy before. So many years ago was that? Uh, I started doing comedy a little over six years ago, I think. And then I moved to Vancouver and lived there for over a year. And Mm. I did comedy a lot there. And... That was wonderful. I gave up alcohol when I was there and then I came back to Ireland and just didn't drink for over a year. Well, yeah. Um, when I came back and everyone was like, oh, well, this is different. <laughs> yeah, who are you? <laughs> when yeah. are you going to come back to us and drink again? Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, kind yeah. of, yeah. It's yeah. funny how much things change. and mm, um, You're not allowed to really change like that. Do you ever get that feeling? Maybe it's different, but, you know, this idea of, oh, well, I'm not going to drink now. Maybe were you comfortable? Like, see, you did you go on a night out and not drink, and everybody's going, you're not going to have a drink? Or did, like, I did, yeah. I used did you to sense that disappointment from other people <laughs> that you weren't drinking? No. It was a weird thing. Like, I just came yeah. home and I was like, I just don't drink now. Yeah. And people were like, oh, okay. I think, to be honest, I think they're probably like, oh, well, good, because this is an intervention we don't have to have now. <laughs> <laughs> you know, okay. like, cancel it. <laughs> um, so, yeah. So, but to be honest, it was like, Vancouver was great for me for loads of reasons, but one yeah. of them was taking a look it really exposed my thoughts around drinking like stuff i just internalized from living in ireland yeah um and the drinking culture in ireland so i just became very aware of that like i would find that you know when we were in a just out at night or whatever and you know last calls would come yeah and everyone would just stay in their seats and be fine with that Mm. as opposed to legging it up to the counter and be like give me all of the alcohol because it's never going it's not going to be here tomorrow so we need to drink (laughs) it all now but also it's madness they've told you the bar is closing and you start ordering loads of drinks that you won't be able to drink in the place now 
Yeah. You know, it's like... You see, the thing is, though, I would probably drink a, a humongous amount <laughs> all the time if it didn't have all the negative oh, effects. Oh, so I know, I know I. that's a really obvious thing so to say. I. So the reality is why we're talking about it is because whatever, we just can't handle the pain of what comes afterwards and yeah. maybe how you oh, are and all the shit that's with it you know mm. the way your body feels the way fucking everything like to me i actually think so i gave it up for three months during the summer and i think that it's really what it was meant to be was for celebrations yeah oh yeah what i mean it's because i went to a wedding <laughs> An Irish wedding without drinking. I mean, you know, oh, no. I wouldn't want to talk to me at that wedding. I would annoy me. Yeah, uh, you know, being around myself even. Yeah, that's that one wedding. of my things. I'm, I'm, I'll allow myself to drink at weddings and hens because yeah. no there's one no should point. do that. Yeah, no. there's nobody should do that to themselves or the other people. It's there. self harm otherwise. Yeah, it <laughs> is. It's harming everybody. <laughs> <laughs> but it is fucking amazing. Uh, uh, the, but th- so that's what I'm you should have it for the big celebrations but you don't need to have the big celebrations every Friday and Saturday night no really. oh or and that's the culture is that we're yeah we're having a massive celebration <laughs> and drink all the beer tonight and then if we're feeling okay we'll have another go yeah, at the celebration absolutely, tomorrow absolutely yeah or but, oh it's Wednesday well you know let's have a cute celebration <laughs> fucking hell we're unreal yeah yeah, yeah. whereas the other people other like years ago I lived in France um uh, I feel this story. <laughs> no, there isn't a story, but I, 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 I say that from time to time and I get eyes raised to heaven from friends. But anyway, um, but I do, I do remember, I found it phenomenal that you'd sit in a bar and drink a glass of wine. With yes, people. And, and just one. Just one. Yeah. What, what are we doing, like? When, when are we going to have the crack here? Yeah. And this, yeah. <gasps> I mean, let's help get the first two in oh. anyway. Then we can all just relax into the crack and then we'll just keep it going but from that, there. But there is a, such an anxiety around it all, isn't there? Like, mm. and if, you know, if someone's glasses, you know, if they have this much left in their drink, you're like, oh my God, they nearly don't have any drink. Yeah. That's like, <laughs> yeah, but we're, we're in a bar. So it's fine. <laughs> there's, like, there's loads of it there. Like there literally is <laughs> loads of it there and they won't take it away. And, you know, you have loads of choice too. Don't worry. Yeah. Uh, yeah, but there's just, yeah, it's a bit mad now. Yeah, we are a bit, a bit nuts mad. because of it. Like, and we all kind of laugh it off. But I think I anyway, you, you either... I think you reach a certain point in your life that you either are going to rein it in yeah. or you're going to go full on alcoholic. <laughs> you like, commit fully. Yeah, you <laughs> commit fully. And fair fucks, like, if you're willing to go all in and ruin everything, yeah, fuck it, like. I know, I know. It's awful sad, though. It is, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I can totally see how it happens. I suppose that's great crack for the person doing it for a time, isn't for it? For a time. And for then a time. You, then you're making, you know, phone calls to people who don't want at three o'clock in the morning or, you know, like, yeah. you don't want to be doing that. Or now, I guess it's worse because you can be on Twitter or angry emails and Facebook and stuff. Oh, that old fucking thing, yeah. And yeah. then you, and then it's up there forever. Here's here's, exactly. here's your event. Yeah, exactly. Or this wonderful picture. Um, but I was trying to get my head around. You know, I think it's really interesting for somebody who's uh, say you're from one harm on one side of you're not going out, you're not feeling a certain way, and then the, the next thing in my mind, you're going to do the absolute hardest possible thing, which is stand up on a comedy stage. Like you oh, couldn't yeah. make <laughs> a bigger fucking leap. It's not like you're going to go out and just meet somebody for coffee. You're going to go. Yeah. Obviously, there's a bit of progression there, but I mean mm. that is. It's an interesting, you know, they always talk about the mentalness of the comedian. Though. Yeah, uh, yeah. And to be honest, that was something that I've I've tried to, like that, I've, you know, when you were saying at the beginning, like, I've tried to be like, oh no, I have to be normal. Like, I have yeah. to sort my shit out and I have to just be normal. And then I was like, Eve, you want to do comedy? Yeah. That would actively work against you. Yeah, it absolutely <laughs> fucking would. So like, I just have to embrace it, you know? You have to embrace the dragon. Yeah. Or whatever yeah. it is inside. Yeah. And it's easier said than done. But um, yeah. I, I think trying to, you, there's there's every, you're not with just one particular side of no, anything. No, no. So the idea of going well, I mean, if you want to be really normal and together and uh, never have know. done a therapy and happy all the time and Do you wonderful. think that exists? I, I, really I just think people lie. Like, yeah. Oh, but then there is people who are less, I think people, some people are just happy enough tipping along, like yeah. happy enough with their lot. And I think that's amazing. I do oh. think that exists. Oh yeah, I t- agree with that. Yeah, absolutely. And they're just yeah. they maybe you know they don't really need to think about things maybe more or and and they're just like oh, I'm grand. This is uh, this is fine. Like I'm happy with this. And yeah, I you know I would really like to be one of those people. I uh, I'm yeah, not. I'm not though. Oh, I'm not. I'm certainly not. No. Yeah. yeah. 
Yeah. Like, yeah, I know somebody and uh, um, just potters about, like, but really grateful and happy, really delighted. Um, See, that's great, yeah. With everything. And it's, it's, it's a simple sort of living, but it's, you know, maybe he doesn't like his job too much. And, and you, so then you could say you don't, you don't really know under the surface, but the, my, the impression I get is somebody who's just totally chilled and happy. Yeah, you know? and probably like accepting of the job thing. You know, he probably can, some people are just okay with it and they're just, they're better at coping yeah. with it. Whereas I was like, ah, I hate this. I was like that. So much annoys me. But yeah, I was like that continuously, like con- years and years yeah, I know. and years. Even when I had my own business, it was still, this this can't be it. Okay. Even this can't be it. Even though, and I mean, it was still a free sort of energy in the company and it was blah, blah, blah. But it still felt this, no, no, it's not it. Like, this, I'm still doing work for other people. I, can't, I mean, I'm still life dictated by what other people demand almost. I wonder then, I mean... What is it you're searching for? Like, is is that is it even attainable? Because is life just kind of been like, well, this is it, and yes, there are good things and there are not so good things. Yeah. But I just have to find peace between those things and with both of those things. Yeah, I don't know. Like, um, yeah, just, <laughs> I think well, it is. It, right, so uh, you know, in theory, I think. Um, in theory, I think that is the case. I mean, it absolutely has to be up and down because in the ups, the downs would be irrelevant if it was all flat. It'd be just flat line. It'd yeah. be but, uh, like it's kind of like this idea of um, taking pills, right? Prozac mm. or whatever. Yeah. Um, I think you half mentioned it. Now you may have changed or whatever. So if you don't want to talk about this, but I, I you never know, took but, them. Yeah, I never took yeah. them either. And somebody yeah. said to me at one point because I was just going through. I was so frustrated. Maybe the word is depressed. Uh, uh, for some reason, I don't like it. Uh, uh, the drugs? Or no, I don't like the word depressed. depressed. I, uh, yeah, yeah, I know. Because it's not it, nice it carries word. an awful lot with it. I know it does. Yeah. Somebody said something about the word deep rest that your body and mind need deep rest. But anyway, th- uh, and that kind of made me come to terms with the word ever slightly. I like that. Um, it kind of makes sense. But somebody said to me when I told them how I was feeling, maybe you should, and somebody really close to me, maybe you should take um, pills. And to me, that was kind of like. This is it, like yeah. to live. Fuck this, duck. Like, I'd rather be, yeah, mental. Yeah. Than and not even that mental is the wrong word, but, but I'd rather be a certain way than putting a veil over the electricity that is living, the rawness, the uncomfortableness. Yes. The the everything that but is. But it is this. to be human. Yeah. Like you're essentially numbing your humanness. Yeah. Just in my opinion. Now, That's I my people, impression. I've never yeah, taken it. No, so neither have I. So maybe I'm not the best person to talk about. It. I don't know. But that was certainly, I really, really didn't want to go on them. Yeah. And I mean, I was given a prescription within 30 seconds of going into a doctor's surgery. Mm. You know? And it was like. Yeah. I, I, you see, you just went into a doctor and they, he, he said, take the pills, this and do. Pretty much. Like, this was this is how it went. So I went into the doctor, told him um, I was feeling depressed. And his first question was, oh, did you break up with a boyfriend? <laughs> oh, I was sake. so annoyed like in my head I was like my there's nothing else in the world yeah. I mean, you're no much deeper than that women are yeah, not exactly. deep at all yeah. my only purpose on life is to find a boy that will like me and yeah. have babies and then you'll be complete and th- yeah. yes absolutely yeah. Yeah. I mean what am I even doing yeah. thinking about <laughs> other things um, so I was really not I was like my problems are bigger than that actually um, and then I just said to him I don't have a boyfriend actually and he looked at me as if well, that's, that's the, the problem. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you just need to get sake. laid. That is all you need to do. Yeah, um, so, and then he was like, straight away, straight away, it was the prescription for okay, drugs. Just nothing, like that. Nothing else <laughs> for drugs. Yeah. And I was like, I'm not going to take them. Like, I'm going to go to therapy. And he was just rolling his eyes. Like, he did not. He was like, no, that's yeah. you're wasting time. I think, I mean, that's the fucking horrendous. I, I mean, the idea of, I mean, the last thing should be the pills if it's irreparable, but absolutely make sure you've ticked the the 10 things beforehand. I think so. Uh, which is exercise, uh, food, alcohol, yes. nicotine, caffeine, doing something at least that you kind of like a little bit. Working on your self-worth. I, 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 and confidence. And it's, yeah. it's, it's, it is actually, it's to me, the biggest fucking thing that I discovered is self-talk 
right? Oh, same. So it's kind of like somebody said to me, well, the way you're going on to yourself there now, beating yourself up about that, if somebody talked to your kid like that, how would you feel? Yeah. Oh, God. Oh, I thought it was them. a brilliant fucking question. And you would yeah. see, so why should you be putting up with that self fucking rubbish all the continuous time? Now it's easier said than done or whatever. But I think that is half. But anyway, I, I see, the thing is, it sounds like, you kind of, you know, when I'm saying that sounds like I know something about, uh, uh, to me, I just wouldn't take those things that would fail life. Yeah, and well, way. I agree. That, that was yeah. my thinking as well. And I also feel like the giving people pills is just yet another way to disempower people. I feel mm. we're generally, as a society, as the kind of a human race, we're just collectively disempowered, yeah. I feel. You know, yeah. we, we don't recognize that we have so much power like we can mm. do so many things to help ourselves to help the world to help other people and we just don't because we're sort of just like bet down and like and school has a big part to play in this i feel because but everything it, you do you do <coughs> for other people and you're not taught that you're, you're resilient you're strong mm. you can do these things yourself you're not taught all that you're taught do sit there do Shut this the fuck up yeah absolutely. but it, i mean it's not just it's, this that disempowering thing i don't think is just an irish thing where i mean in particular i think we all grew up with uh you know you don't be so cocky shut your mouth oh, or, yeah, and yeah. rain that confidence in there yeah. now, and don't be giving yourself too much praise and all yeah. that sort of stuff and whereas you, we used to think, well, the Yanks are great at, uh, you know, they'd always get up and they'd give, if they, you'd see them in presentations, aren't they so confident in that piece? Um, but we berate them for, the, for it, as if like, oh, look, those have been off themselves. Imagine them yeah. liking themselves. Yeah, how, can how they, dare but they? But the reality, though, is in a way that even still look at the state of them. I mean, it's not like they're exactly a wonderfully non-drugged up nation. Oh, absolutely, you know, yeah. But the disempowering thing comes equally we have the power to do what we want but we uh, are still the same people who cut people down for fucking talk and so we are the ones that give and take the power away yes I absolutely think, you know. oh but that's what happens when when you don't recognize that that you have quite a lot of power you just yeah. abuse it then or when you do you abuse it. so and that's the thing you have to be very aware of your shadow side as well you know and you're kind of uh those murkier kind of bits of you that are not very pleasant you no. know you have to kind of you have to out them yeah you really do and that's a really awful thing to do you have to just kind of realize oh, i'm a bit of a shit person mm. you know you really <laughs> well i think the, uh, things like social media and stuff like that are to me uh, it allows you know say we were in a conversation and um say imagine. it was an argument <laughs> imagine you know just say no just say imagine really get it clear in your mind as i was having a conversation but in the say you're talking to somebody and you know unless it's really 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 heated yeah you see the other person so so shit is not coming to come out of your mouth that's fucking you know up its own hole and contorted and whatever the fuck whereas that whole social media thing with people putting comments up and all that stuff is it makes it impossible for other people to express themselves then because it, with one person's expression another person comes in and cuts yeah. through so and in a case of somebody wanting to be liked it's impossible for them yeah i don't know where i'm going with that now in particular but yeah but i mean i think that's you know when you see people cu coming in and cutting people down yeah and sometimes it's very interesting now i i've maybe done it three times in my life because i just think i hate reading comments under things I just cannot stand it yeah Um, because they're usually just the worst people in the world saying the worst things in the world we've all done it once or I've done it once and, got, mean, and okay. got caught right. really badly I haven't because I just can't be arsed but, um, but reading down through the comments you just it's very interesting when you take a very objective sort of observer look and don't get emotionally involved in any yeah. of their responses because you just really see quite clearly oh, this person just has their own shit to deal with and oh, they're not really even dealing with what was being said with the point they've missed the point they just the he whole headline thing is you know they're not, i'm not even going to read the point they, i'm just going to get the headline i'm going to get annoyed and i'm going to let it out yeah absolutely and yeah. hopefully i'll get thumbs up like as well yeah you know, i know fucking yeah hell. get that dopamine hit <laughs> yeah mm. but but that's the thing that was one of the things i actually realized when i was doing that uh, psychotherapy course in one of those group things and there was just one day i went in for an hour and a half i didn't say anything which was very unusual for me in that yeah. group and I just didn't say anything because I was I just want to see what's happening. And I had this like light bulb moment realization of 
everything that everyone says and does and thinks and in- how they interpret things it's just about them I was actually fucking thinking that the other day that the, that it, it, this idea did I do good yeah did it, it comes from maybe where you know everybody's kids going around so they're happy enough to be in a place where they've got a boss who's telling them what to do because they might get the he did a good job there now yeah well because done. maybe you didn't get it from your mom or your dad or whatever or maybe was. that was the, maybe when you were being a certain way when you were a kid say you were you know you say you fucking towed the line and you were really great at towing the line and you got praise for towing the line yeah and that was the only way you got the praise yeah yeah so then when you're in a working job and you're happy to stay in this nine to five uh, thing stuck at a computer all day you're getting at least the you did a good job there yeah. you did a good job there now well done keep that up you're getting the gold star you're getting your gold star yeah. like in the copy book for, yeah. uh, for more than likely doing something that you didn't really like mm-hmm. but you've learned that habit that we all learn is that well I'm going to just continue to um, to do that like I'm going yeah. to continue to seek approval for things that I don't really like doing getting the little dopamine hit or getting whatever that fuck everybody's talking about dopamine and serotonin now yeah. but obviously there's a huge amount of our habits dictated by it but anyway what am I saying but okay. I that yeah. on that that looking for approval and, and whatever and not wanting to be rejected and wanting to be accepted and everything yeah. that um, I realised like in my kind of late teens early 20s when I really just wasn't happy with who I was as a person yeah. and I wanted I knew who I wanted to be and I knew what I wanted to be but just I think because it was so different to my reality at the time in my environment I just didn't dare you know mm. and so then I kind of realized I was like okay in order to be accepted by other people people I don't really particularly like or value that much um but I still want their approval for some reason yeah so in order to not be rejected by them I'm sacrificing parts of myself and in doing so I'm rejecting bits of myself yeah so once I realized that I was like, oh, that's not a way to go on, you know. I want, I don't even value these people's opinion, but I want it on some level. Yeah. But in trying to get it, I'm rejecting bits of myself and I'm not being me. Yeah, well, that's that whole kind of, um, where you were going there, is that um, kind of authentic self lost to this aberration that comes in that nearly almost is not unlike a held breath. Well, that's the way I kind of describe it anyway. But just this, uh, this hell breath of well, this is how I can negotiate the situation here. I can fucking, and if I'm like this, should get by here, should survive, yeah. should be okay. I, yeah. I, that's probably. I don't know if that. Well, I, I do totally get. Let me have another go at that. Do you know this? <laughs> <laughs> say you're, uh, you go into your job on the first day, and you're obviously you can't you can't be yourself on the first day no and then you can't be yourself on the second day you and can't then, ever you, be you can't ever be yourself and so it's 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 degrees to which that bothers you i think you know yeah. you, I, for me i just reached the point of this other thing that i was being say businessman entrepreneur sort of lark that idea just wasn't holding on its own it just didn't um okay i, I wasn't happy holding that idea up anymore it just didn't work yeah that so you have to shed that part of yourself well to allow i don't know i mean it's all fucking theory as well but to allow this uh, another side you out if you're if that's what you're talking about i think yeah, is yeah, this yeah. underneath is this vulnerable sort of fucking nut job whatever and i'm not saying you're a vulnerable, like nut job, but, vulnerable nut job but <laughs> but uh, and that's really who it is and you know necessarily don't don't cross you either you, you see there's this perception of that when somebody reveals their weaknesses that they're almost you know i think that's a big thing why people don't come out and say talk about depression because it's it's they the pack will think that i am weak i cannot be seen as weak yeah i think that's nonsense though yeah i I also think a lot of i think a lot of this world is kind of built on projection anyway like Mm. and sort of everything really is the opposite of what it is so Mm. like with that thing of um acting the tough guy i actually think I remember actually yesterday I was I was in a shop and I was looking across the street and there was this big like hard man guy like older what was he in like his maybe like, like late myself, come on, yeah. no yeah. no oh, uh, he big like hard he probably sorry, <laughs> sorry of course Frank um, no yeah. but he looked he looked probably like like his life has aged him more than he actually is yeah, you know okay. hardened um, very hardened yeah. yeah but also 
Anyway, he was wearing this like baseball cap and like um, bursting out of his tracksuit and just big belly, very unhealthy. Like, look, he was just going to have a coronary like at any point. Yeah. And he was like sitting down outside a coffee shop with some cans and stuff. But like really, and all these huge, ri- you know, those big gold rings and like just proper. The tattoos here. Oh, yeah. he, oh yeah. I couldn't see that. But like, I wouldn't be surprised. Like, it wouldn't surprise me if he'd like done time or evaded it, but has done shit, you know. And but anyway, he was on the phone. He was like really big and like yelling down the phone and just like, I was like, what the heck? But so he just had such a front on and so many defenses. Mm. And to me, those kind of people who have this like big walk and this, all these pretenses, they're the weakest people yeah. in my view, because it's like, who are you fooling? Like you look, you well, know, that whole rock solid fragile. fuck and everything is, uh, I, I'm amazed and everything's amazing and this is what I'm doing, I'm doing this, 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 and this, blah, 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 blah. Yeah, okay. but everyone's fragile, really, you know, when it comes down to it. Yeah. We're all just fragile, but it's just, I guess the more you're afraid of your fragility and the more you're afraid of your vulnerability, the more you have to pretend that you're okay and you've got your shit together. Yeah, you have to do everything and anything to try and avoid anybody seeing. I think it is that though, is it? That you just don't want to be seen like that. If they see yeah. me as I truly am, sort of fucking thing, you know, they, that won't be liked. It's much better to be this other thing. And that, I mean, that is horseshit. But that's yeah. But I guess I guess if that thing that's not really me is rejected, well then I'm still safe. It's a self preservation thing yeah. as well, you know, because I'm not really rejected. Whereas if you just are like, This is just who I am, yeah. Take it or leave it. Take it or leave it, yeah. And then if people reject you, but that's there's an awful freedom in that too, because I mean, I think that's the ultimate freedom is not giving a fuck. Not giving a fuck. And just also getting rid of people who are if you're like, Oh, you d- you're not into this, cool, off you go. Take I think care. that'll happen though they won't get the fucking they're not getting what they're looking for anymore from you you know yeah uh, oh absolutely yeah yeah you're different yeah. yeah 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 I like that though the freedom thing is um, the not giving a fuck it is yeah. kind of in that scenario and obviously you know if you're going into a room and there's loads of people with machine guns I mean you're going to be guarded you want to be an idiot <laughs> not to be guarded and um, but in most scenarios or in situations or even with art or you know comedy i mean you must know the idea of going up when you've got that you're in that zone and not giving a fuck some lads and you get up yeah. there. you must be able to feel it top to toe i don't give a fuck oh like, my god do you brilliant. know do you know the best times um i've learned the best time to do comedy is like after therapy oh really yeah because <laughs> you're just totally broken and exposed yeah it, no? you kind of are but also you're like this is just standing on a stage talking to people I've talked yeah. about and felt and you know where I've gone in that space there yeah. was way worse than I've you know I've come through that and that's fine and you're just yeah you have this it's an amazing I don't even it's just this amazing feeling and amazing energy that mm. you're just like I don't give a fuck mm. you're all listening and you're all going to enjoy this and you're all going to laugh and that's just what's happening <laughs> <laughs> and yeah it's just really yeah mm. it's an amazing thing yeah I kind of like that now I have to say. <laughs> yeah. tell me about your breathing thing that you're doing I'm intrigued. So there's uh, Wim Hof. It's called Wim Hof. He's a Dutch guy. I looked him up. Did you? Yeah. yeah. He's he's really. Um, he's what you'd expect. He's kind of like what you'd expect. <laughs> he is that sort of sincere, but he has that sort of sincere, authentic, real energy about him. And yeah. So he talks about cold therapy, and I had been doing cold showers. There's there's actually you know YouTube videos on how to take a cold shower. Is, it right. had something like six hundred thousand views. Just you know. What. <laughs> Um, is the person take the shower hot or something is that why uh, <laughs> that's a good point um he's a dude so um maybe um but uh what the fuck is going to see so there's a ted talk actual ted talk about cold therapy and and taking a cold shower and that thing i love that the way that you're like actual ted talk there's ted talks about everything well the fucking like, is but i mean i was blown talk. away by the idea that there's a ted talk about cold shower yeah. but his was kind of like Say there's shit in life that you just think, oh, I'm, uh, I want to do, it, but I'm not doing it. This is not Wim Hof. The TED Talk thing was, you know, cold showers about, say there's just stuff, I want to go and do this, but oh, I feel uncomfortable or whatever. I would be uncomfortable doing it. He says, take the cold shower. And if you get into that habit, you'll kind of start, start to get that vibe going of, oh, I'll just do it. I just Ooh. jump in. So I get, I was just getting in the morning and have five minutes cold oh, shower is. your oh. head is freezing but anyway so Wim then uh, I stumbled upon Wim Hof and he's all about this it's kind of hyperventilating almost but you breathe you, you breathe for 30 breaths then you hold your breath and you, you as you do you see you do it three or four times 
you're able to hold your breath for almost two and a half minutes, three minutes. Wow. And for him, it's, you know, he goes and swims in the Arctic under the ice with just his shorts on him. And so he's all talking about this inner natural energy that occurs wow. through breathing and cold therapy and that you would be blown away with the stuff that you can do as a result of it. And like heal yourself and stuff and not be sick, isn't that enough? Like yeah, there's a huge amount of that, not getting colds or not... No, because you're permanently cold. You're like. permanently fucking cold, yeah. <laughs> so there's, there's, there's all that to it. So I've done it for six weeks. Wow, and how's it going? Mm. How long can you hold your breath for? Is that I can a hold my breath for three minutes. And, oh my and so gosh. actually after doing the hold your breath for three minutes, then they get you to do one, one more round and you do push-ups on your fists. So without doing the breathing, I can do push-ups of around 15. And now in the last weeks, I'm able to do 50. So you really are, that's the one thing that I did find wow. really, really different in the sense of, let me just flick this for a second. Oh my word. Um, that, um, yeah, that you actually do sort of, there is something going on that, yeah. you know, that you feel this kind of inner sort of power or, Something. I'm not totally convinced. I couldn't say to you now you should definitely do this because I'm a real recruiter. If I did think it was amazing, <laughs> you know, if it was a, if it was chicken wings or beer, I'd, d I'd be able to tell you the type of beer and I'd be making you taste it. But I don't know. It's not. Wow. I had to do a 10 minute cold shower last week in this particular thing. Oh, mm. That's intense. That is intense. Yeah. But I mean, if you're feeling inner power, that's good. You see, that's what I'm saying. I can't really say that I think that, think it's amazing. I, I, I'm doing it and I'm going to complete the 10 weeks. But uh, sorry, another thing, like maybe the 50 press-ups are impressive. I don't know. Very. I can't. Oh, no, I can't do press-ups. Yeah, well, I don't know uh, if they are. I, I, but then when you go in the shower, it does this new breathing thing that you actually feel this warm glow of heat in a cold shower. Wow. So I suppose that's interesting. And you've experienced that? I have experienced it this morning, yeah. Amazing. And with the hollow... I don't know if it is actually quite holotropic. Have you ever heard that? No. But with, with this deep breathing, when you start looking in here, you can start to see lights and shit like that. Amazing. You know? See, now you're hooked. You see with the lights, aren't you? <gasps> I'm totally <laughs> going to do... No, no, I hate cold showers so do you? much. Yeah. So Have you done a cold shower? Yeah, but like... But consciously gone into... No, no, it was only like, oh, there is no hot water. Yeah. Okay, shit. But you, you actually do feel... Um, you go in like a, a mouse... And you do come out like a little bit of a lion or, you know, okay. you do come out, wow, afterwards. Wow. So there is, yeah, I think that, I, I would definitely say the cold showers, but I was doing that way before the Wim Hof thing. So, but I think the cold showers are really interesting. No matter wow. how you're feeling going in, you're transformed to coming out. Okay, I might give them a try. <laughs> I might. Do the video. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Or don't. <laughs> um, there you go. You know, we've actually talked for an hour. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Of course. Yeah, there you go. And we had great chats downstairs as well. Just like that, like two in the cud. <laughs> <laughs> Jeez, we, did, we went deep, didn't we? We did. We went deep. Yeah, yeah. geez, we did. Yeah. Mm. How are you feeling? So we, we talked about. <laughs> <laughs> you do, you're going to do the summary. Come on, yeah. So what did we talk about? <laughs> yeah. How are you feeling now? That's what my therapist says to me towards the end. It's like, how are you feeling now? I'm like, okay, it's over then. <laughs> Hi, if you like the conversation that I just had and you'd like more, please hit the subscribe button. Thank you. Frank, come on, man.